Welcome back to the farmstead. We're glad you're here. It is December 15th and we're getting ready to get into the bees. Say what? You've heard us talk about the woolly caterpillar roller coaster winters and that this winter is going to be worse than any winter in the past. This is the kind of weather that really makes you worry as a beekeeper. When we're up to 50, 51 degrees during the day, 20, 18 at night, that is absolutely horrible on livestock in general, but especially bees. So today we're gonna to take advantage of the warm spell and we're gonna hit these guys with a salic acid using our Instavape 18 volt. This time of year is absolutely beautiful to murder the last of any mites that are left inside that colony. At this time of year, at solstice, we're at the very, very bottom of the lack of daylight every single day. And as we hit solstice, we start to climb up out of that going towards spring. The queens will start to brood up very slightly from here on out. But what is beautiful is that we are at, at a time where we have so very little sealed brood at all in the colonies, using osalic acid is extremely effective. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get everything treated with osalic acid. We're gonna get a hive alive fondant on every single colony. Um, we're gonna check in and see how they're doing. Let's get started. Kind of feel like Santa Claus delivering Christmas presents to my bees. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. It is the most wonderful time of the year to be murdering mites. That's a fact. One of the reasons why we've chose to go to using Hive Alive fondant in the wintertime instead of what we've done in the past is that there are some things about the fondant that's a little different than just using dry sugar. Dry sugar was great. We used it for years and years and years, but what I found is I wasn't quite sure that the bees were actually eating or utilizing the sugar as well as I hoped they would. I think the sugar acted as a great desiccant, but it, it got to be extremely messy in the spring, trying to clean all that mess up. So we switched to Hive Alive fondant. That is already an inverted sugar, but what I like about it is it has additives in it like thymol. That's gonna help keep the bees gut cleaned up, especially when they are feeding on the stored honey, but also the fondant. That's a big deal. Um, thymol is used a lot uh, for not only varroa control, but for the gut health. And so that's why it's important for us to go ahead and get this on so when the bees are digesting and using this in the wintertime, they can stay as healthy as possible. Now I only have enough uh, today uh, for about a hundred colonies and I'm gonna have to run back to the barn uh, to get some more fondant But I'm gonna go ahead and get this 90 or so out and then we're gonna reset and do it again That nice cluster of bees I'm gonna put that right on top I'm gonna actually gonna I'm gonna leave that thymol crystal in there. I'm gonna close them back up and now what's cool is I can look down and eventually they're gonna eat through that fondant and it's gonna be facing up and we're gonna be able to see them eating through it just by popping the bucket off. So on a day like today, I could have just put the bucket on top of there. Um, but the thing about that is it's, it's gonna drop so quick today, it's only hit this 50 degrees for like two hours and it's gonna cool off so quick. It's not worth the aggravation to go out today for two hours of feeding on everything. Now, when we get a day where it's like four to six hours mm -hmm. of those kind of temps, then I will get out there and flip these over and get them some pro sweet. Um, let's get fondant on everything else and let's go ahead and get them treated. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks, when they see dead bees in the wintertime, they freak out and they, they think something's wrong. But in reality, uh, seeing dead bees in a rotation of, de of dead bees is a good thing. Um, it lets you know, number one, your colony is active um, and they're, they're dragging out the dead. So that's a big deal. And that's a good thing to see. Six, six frames of bees. What I like about that is this genetic stock that we're running that's so heavily dominated by Caucasians, they can go into the wintertime with really small numbers. Crews do their thing with so little resources and then explode in the springtime. And I absolutely love that.
Oh, they look good. Hello, ladies. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Keep up the good work. See you soon. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get oxalic acid on these colonies. So what we're going to use is our Instavape 18 volt cordless unit. We're going to put our DeWalt battery in. And then I'm going to turn the unit on. And we're going to wait for uh, our temperature to get up to 444. And we're going to be good to go. Now, while that warms up, here is the secret. There is a secret sauce to killing mites in December. Are you ready for it? Might be gone. I'm just kidding. It's just a salic acid, but you gotta have fun, right? So take a look at your voltage meter. You wanna make sure it doesn't fall down too low. Hey man. Hey Rob, you're, uh, you're live on camera. Hey, we're out here and I had a brain fart. I can't remember, what is the low voltage threshold that folks should be looking out for using the Instavape? No matter what battery they have, it's 15 volts. 15 volts. Yep. Very good. Yep. I, that's what I that's what I thought, but I'm I'm a little foggy in the brain here. So there you go. It's all good. We're working on getting some stickers and stuff to help remind people, but it is 15 volts. 15 volts. There you have it, folks. Hey, this is why La Robbie's is awesome because you just pick up the phone, and Rob answers, and you have a question, and he takes care of you. Boom. Simple. Done. Rob, thanks for picking up the phone. I'm going to cut you loose so you can get back to work, and we're going to get back to work here in the bees, so... All right. Bye. Bye. Does that ever freak you out when you've got bees in your veil? Or see them right there? <laughs> I think we've been huffing too much of salic acid. We're getting a little goofy here, Jake, aren't we? Merry Christmas, lady. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get this dialed down to two grams. That's what I love about this unit is you can dial, you can go from one to four, so easy. All right, we're gonna go ahead and open up our OA. This goes right in. I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna stick it right in the entrance. Hit my plunger, let it go to town. That easy. I mean, it took all of about uh, 15 seconds. Now it's back up to temperature. You see it here at 444. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out our applicator. And we're gonna go in for another dose on the next colony. One thing I love about these vaporizers is they really put out the vapor. Look at that. Love that. Let's see what this vapor looks like coming out of the top. Okay, a couple things to keep in mind when you're treating in mid-December or you're treating at any time of the year. We all do this a little differently. Is there a right way? Is there a wrong way? Here's what I'm gonna say. Whatever way is working for you and you're getting the results that you're looking for, then that's the right way. What we do here might be a little different than what you will do at home in your bee yard. One thing to keep in mind, you wanna have a respirator on hand or nearby, use it. To plug up the entrances, we can use blue shop towels around that front area where the vaporizer is if you really wanna make sure um, that all that vapor is locked in. I feel really good about the method that we're using to get in, get out, and to get those bees treated. That sounds simple, but it's complicated. It's simply complicated to get in there and find the right strategy, the right set of things to do to give you the results that you're looking for. It can be daunting, but don't be afraid to dig in there and keep trying. Even if it's contrary to what you see everybody else doing, the results will speak for themselves. So I encourage you, don't be afraid to get in there and you do what's best for your bees. 
If you like this sort of thing, be sure to check out our podcast at Nature's Image Farm, where we're going to continue to share our family's journey in beekeeping. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. And as always, I want to remind you to be the lighthouse and be the change that you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas. From, From our hive to yours, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.